Good day, mate. How are you going? <laughs> Good day, mate. Good day, mate. How are you going? <laughs> Thank you, Luna. <laughs> it is the weekend. How is everyone doing? I'm so excited for the weekend. But I'm here working real quick before we get to that. So let's have some fun, shall we? <laughs> yeah, she loves me. We've got to break them up. Farming groups say supermarkets use market power. Oh, look at me. Look at me. I'm not even showing you guys the screen. <laughs> there we go. We've got to break them up. Farming groups say supermarkets use market power to distort prices. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm 99% I'm, uh, sure that's true. Yeah. Look, I think uh, without even reading this article, I think when you can, you know, shop local, shop small places, mom and pop shops, you know, buy from uh, direct from farmers. If you can go out to, you know, the rural areas and uh, a, a lot of them, you know, will sell uh, various things right from the farm. I think that's the way to go when you can. I know there is a need for supermarkets sometimes uh, for, you know, big amounts of different things and stuff that's a little harder to find maybe. But this is kind of above my head. It comes down to, you know, choices, prices. Of course, the supermarkets sometimes might be able to have big uh, connections and yada yada. So they might be able to offer cheaper prices. What is this Audi like logo on every glass door and window in Australia? I tried finding this on the internet with no luck. Any help is appreciated. Yeah, that looks exactly like the Audi logo. And it's on every glass door. Anyone know what this is? Let's see if the comments know. Its proper name is Safety Motif. And this particular design belongs to Dowell Windows and Doors. Other manufacturers have their own unique pattern. This style of motif is only uh, compliant in residential buildings. You need a larger solid band for commercial buildings. Uh, safety motif, by the way. I know I said that wrong the first time. Wow, that's interesting. I'm, I'm glad someone knew. Otherwise, I would have been like, darn it, what is that? Pretty sure it's just a pattern to help you see the door so you don't walk into it. <laughs> I know I have done that once. I was going to say, I've been lucky that I haven't really walked into any doors. But I think I have once. It was one of those revolving doors like that. And sometimes they, they get a little sketchy, you know, and I think it like stopped abruptly and boom. It's, uh, yeah, that's not, that's not too fun. Okay, we're told to be careful on this mountain road. I don't know where it is. See if anyone can recognize it. Oh, look at us. Oh, they had to pull over. We have a truck. Oh, my God. Holy smokes. Did he fall off? How big of a drop-off is this? Look at this. Oh, oh, no. Okay, okay. Could have been worse, thank goodness, because the driver's in the cab of the truck, obviously. It's only the rear trailer that fell down. How scary, though. Obviously, that's going to be a hell of a recovery and, and definitely jam up traffic for the rest of the day, uh, or a long while at least. Jeez, that is crazy, man. Is it the road between Umba and Kurumbin? My mom has been hit by a ute up there. Both of their cars almost ended up over the edge. Oh, my goodness. Can't even imagine why that truck would be going that way other than to cross the border undetected. Spoiler alert, there are cameras up there. Yes, that's the one. I stayed back to help warn traffic until the police arrived. The driver said he was heading to Moore Willemba to pick up another car before heading down to Melbourne, and a GPS sent him down this road. How scary, man. Those damn GPSs always messing with us. I've gotten into so many bad situations in the past with GPS, and I've learned to, like, trust your instincts. Screw the GPS, man. Dash Cams Australia, you'll be featured in the clip. I did submit a couple weeks ago, but it never made a cut. Oh, it might. It might. It might make the end of the month one. Yeah, that's a that's a bad one. Wow. Be careful out there. Okay, so the author said this guy just fell out of a tree and decided to join them on their walk. <laughs> Look at the way he's walking. <laughs> and he's on a footpath. That's what's cracking me up. Jeez. Keep the kids safe. <laughs> Why is that so funny? Like the way he's just casually like. 
What a boss. Is that, uh, what do you call it, like a monitor lizard or something, right? <laughs> Only in Australia. He thought he'd monitor your behavior. Hey, there we go. Doesn't look like you're keeping up. <laughs> Fire ants detected south of Byron Bay after gardener raises alarm. You see the picture of the fire ants. These guys, these guys are no fun. I hadn't had a run-in with fire ants until a couple years ago in the desert. And I stepped in this juniper bush or something in our backyard, in, you know, New Mexico. And boy, oh boy, I had, um, you know, a good section like this of my lower leg covered in these bad boys and it felt really weird all of a sudden yeah it was bad i panicked i ran barefoot in the rocks remember in new mexico no grass yards your whole yard is rocks and so i ran on the rocks fast which you don't want to do and i went up onto uh the patio and i turned on the hose and just bzz, went to town and it worked it got them off but it was red and kind of itchy and painful for a couple of days and luckily it went away but i don't think they got a chance to go haywire on me but yeah fire ants are not fun man keep an eye out if you're uh, near the byron bay area watch out for them fire ants awesome queensland sunset today this was from yesterday anyone remember seeing this that looks pretty epic it's uh kind of weird too because there's some sort of shadow i don't know if there's like a different cloud or what's going on you see that like sharp line where it's like this cool you know neon orange and then the grayness in the middle and there's like a sharp line it looks kind of weird right but it does the whole scene is is very nice right you have the dark green look at how beautiful that grass looks it's rich and green oh summer must be nice guys uh and for those wondering this was overlooking ipswich city out to the glen rock state forest and toowoomba range what a beautiful area oh my god if you are seeing the sunset in queensland uh you know mostly every day in summer enjoy it for me would you have a cold one sip on that lay back and take a look at that oh, wish i was there Winter is harsh, man. Winter has been hella harsh here. Actually, it was really good in December. I shouldn't say that. December was really warm. November was really warm. But then we got the cold and snow like this, like a light switch. And uh, it's it sucks. <laughs> but this sucks too. Calgary. Calgary. No, not Calgary. Canada. Come on now. Calgary. I, I know I've said this before and I know I got it wrong and I know you guys taught me how to say it and I never remember because some of these words I just can't say. I don't know. Something's not right with my Aussie town names. Uh, some of them. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Australia's largest outback town, speaking of, facing a week without power during a heat wave. That's scary. Let me look them up on the old weather app. See what's been going on. Uh, that sounds horrible. Anyone around that area, please stay safe. I hope you're staying safe. And uh, that's not fun at all. Although, I, I should say, <laughs> the chances of people watching from there right now, if it's really hot and not a lot of power, uh, I hope they're doing more important things than watching me. Oh, my God. It is hella hot there. That's in Western Australia. And uh, I'm sure it's been hot. But even as I'm recording this... Let's see. Does it not show? There it is. It's 89 right now. But it's going to top out at 100 degrees Fahrenheit today. And look at the next days. 105 and 110 Fahrenheit. That's outrageous. It has an extreme heat advisory in alert or in effect rather. Oh, my God. I know probably many places in Australia are hot right now. It is summer after all, and it is Australia. <laughs> be careful out there. As much as I hate the cold and would actually rather be in the heat, still, heat can be dangerous. Uh, stay hydrated. Stay out of that sun. Don't get burnt up. After a day here in Cal with no... Uh, That's why I'm going to say it. I'm going to say Cal so I don't get, get it wrong. Cal. <laughs> you know, Cal in Western Australia. After a day here in Cal with no power, petrol, internet, or ice, and 40-degree heat, 40 degrees Celsius, of course... I believe that all the disaster books 
movies, etc., are way off base for how long it takes to go feral. Oh my god. Uh, this is pretty bad, guys. Not good at all. No access to fuel either. Minimal phone service as the towers that serve Telstra slash Optus are running out of power as well as having problems. So no ability to call 000. This is not good at all, man. Well, I'm hoping for the best for everyone in Cal and anywhere that's extreme, experiencing extreme heat waves right now and potential loss of power. Please stay safe, and I hope you can get all the help that you need. I can't help but admire the trash-stealing parrots of Australia. <laughs> Animal crime of the week. Hey, that's pretty, uh, that sounds fun. Let's see if we can check this out. This is the first installment of uh, Animal Crime of the Week. So there you go. This bird, he's a famous one. He's the OG. And there it is. I have to sign up, which I can't do right now. So, oh, it's still letting us on. Okay. But anyway, I won't even read this whole thing uh, right now. I will probably read it later. But there is the Animal Crime of the Week. Check it out. New uh, segment. <laughs> And I can't believe this would be funny to witness in person. I've always heard about it. I've seen, you know, the clips uh, on the Internet, of course. It, it would be funny. That is one thing I don't have to deal with as birds breaking into uh, my, you know, garbage bins. Although I will say we still have that problem. It's just a little different. Uh, it's not as funny. Instead, of we have raccoons. Raccoons get in there. And then I wake up in the morning, and I wonder why there's garbage all over my yard. And, well, there it is. There's a bag ripped apart. And, yeah, they go through it, and they leave a mess. They don't even clean after themselves. How rude. Then I have to go out, clean it up, and say a few cuss words and be like, oh, I hate raccoons, and move on with my day. <laughs> Perth, the capital of Western Australia with a population of 2.2 million on the coast of the Indian Ocean, is pictured from... The International Space Station orbited 263 miles above. Wow, that's actually crazy to think about. On January 9th, 2024. So this is only about 10 days ago or so. The Canning River merges with the Swan River before exiting into the Indian Ocean. This is a really cool picture. It's really clear. Wow, look at that. What a beaut. I'm going to put this on full screen for you guys. Look at that. That's actually insane, right? Let's see when we zoom in. It's a little grainy, which is to be understood. See what we can pick out. Look, I see a golf course. Anyone know what this golf course is? Right by the kind of the water there? Mm, what's this? It looks like a track. Maybe like track and field. Some sort of arena, perhaps, over here? No, maybe not, actually. That might be too small. Another golf course. Those are the easiest to kind of point out, aren't they? Another golf course. <laughs> Man. It's aesthetic, I got to say. It's very aesthetic. Another golf course. Uh, it looks cool. And it's pretty big. I mean, it's kind of got to be big, though, right? Because when you're out there on your own, man, in WA, right? Perth is like is like the hub. They, they got to be big. They depend on each other out there. It's a wild place to be. Let's put this here before I forget. And the rest of the video, I'm just a small little head in the corner. <laughs> Aussie honesty in Sunbury. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a speed limit, correct? 80 kilometers uh, per hour. Surface still. <laughs> I just, I'm not even going to ask, is this real? Because it is. It's got to be. I believe it. This is the only country where I would believe that this is real. I grew up in Sunbury, and every time I've been back recently, I'm astonished by the state of the place. At least twice as many houses as when I was a kid with almost zero upgrades to roads and public transport. And plenty of places with lots of pedestrians which still don't have enough or still don't have a footpath. It feels like a few intersections have had locals clamoring for at least for at least traffic lights and pedestrian. Oh, my God, I cannot talk today pedestrian crossings for 25 years it does seem a bit less dodgy and impoverished so that's improved but a textbook example of housing developers being allowed to go wild and local infrastructure not keeping up at all yeah that does happen uh in my lifetime that's happened to some places i've been to where some places have just gone wild since the 90s and infrastructure has not caught up whatsoever uh, i think i remember saying that in uh, some of our videos we did when we were in Nashville, Tennessee. But that's a different story. Uh, this is just hilarious. 
<laughs> Only in Australia. Uh, shout out to at uh, Ta Lee Joy Photography. These are beautiful pictures. They don't zoom in, so we'll look at them this way. That's so uh, picturesque. Look at the water, too. That's really, really neat. Skin Cancer Clinic opens in Broken Hill as increase in cases expected across Australia. Um, that's pretty crazy, guys. Again, be careful with that sun. That Aussie sun, I've seen some posts. I've seen some pictures. I can't imagine how strong that uh, that sun is. Be careful. A funny aside, but I'm living in the U.S. at the moment with a part of an expat community. The Americans find it funny when we remind each other to put on sunscreen. <laughs> Isn't it funny when you try to prevent cancer? Yeah, I don't know why they're laughing at that. I mean, they should be putting sunscreen on in the U.S. as well. I mean... The sun is the sun. The sun's still strong here. It's just really strong in Australia. And yeah, rightfully so, you should be putting on sunscreen. Um, I guess joke's on them, right? <laughs> if they want to laugh while they're, you know, having their skin deteriorate uh, while they're doing it, uh, more power to them, I guess. Remember, slip, slop, slap, MFers. And we were reminded yet again of, uh, I featured this, I believe, a couple weeks ago. Because they had this uh, on a huge roadside banner. They were really advertising this. Macca's was going all out with, uh, hey, bring in your loose change, eight ninety five, And you can get uh, a meal, right? What is it? Like a chicken sandwich and fries or a, or a burger or whatever. Um, I don't know what it was. But the fact that they called it a loose change meal and it showed nine bucks cracked me up. Look, I don't know what loose change is like in Australia. It is a different place with a different currency. But my American mind, I'm thinking loose change. I look in the cup holder or the center console of my car, and there's loose change there. You know, it's going to take me a while to add that crap up. And if I do, I'll be lucky if it's maybe two or three bucks. <laughs> I'm not going to have $9 in, um, you know, 50 coins. Like, no, that's not happening. The only loose change I carry is a $1 coin I keep in my wallet so I can use the supermarket trolleys to buy my overpriced groceries once a week. You can buy a little tool that opens the trolleys and comes out. No need for a coin ever again. Ooh, I did not know that. I won't do it, but uh, that is very interesting. Hmm. The ones that are keychains are bloody convenient. That they are. And just use bolt cutters. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's real low key, you know. Uh, <laughs> now, see, this is the stuff I like, where people do some cool stuff with their houses or properties. This photographer is capturing Victoria's unique front yards. Look at this front yard, like holy smokes! We got columns and statues. This is super well presented. We have uh, what else? We got we got a swan made of old car tires. That's pretty pretty clever. We have, of course, the mini Parthenon, right? I think that's what they're going for there. Ooh, what is this? Eels or something? Oh, dolphins. <laughs> eels? What the hell am I talking about? It says concrete fountain with handmade dolphins. That's really cool. And uh, quite frankly, dolphins, yeah, they're a lot cooler than eels. <laughs> Ooh, look at this. How on earth do they do that? I always actually think this is super cool. And this is something you really don't see much in the U.S. I mean, you do in really rich neighborhoods, but it's not common. Most people don't go to the effort to have all these shaped hedges. I think it's kind of cool, though. Uh, and I give mad props to anyone that can make shapes out of these. Uh, that's beyond my scope of possibility. Like, I, I could never do that. What is this? A state of Vic Roads Affairs. A section of 100 kilometers per hour road in central Victoria has had a rough surface slash 80 kilometers per hour since September. First they were put up, then they were tossed away by the locals when nothing was done within a couple weeks. Then they were replaced and star picketed in. Then the signs were cut out of the holders. Then they were replaced again, then vandalized. Then this week, a message from Vic Rhodes was added, as you can see right here. Basically, Vic Rhodes and my community have a love-hate relationship about this section of the highway. So Vic Rhodes added this sign that says, we will once you learn how to spell. Now, what's funny is unless I am uh, totally asleep here i don't think anything's spelled wrong rough surface spelled right fix it dogs is spelled right although there is a grammar error so they're in the wrong as well as vic Rhodes actually is kind of the wrong i guess it didn't say the right thing fix it dogs apostrophe s yeah that's not right obviously you know dogs with apostrophe s would mean the dog the dog's what the dog's foot, that would be its showing ownership 
of the noun behind it, right? The dog's food, right? The dog's water. Fix it. Dogs should have just been with the S. No apostrophe needed. <laughs> it's not even a spelling mistake. It's a punctuation error and a grammatical error. Dogs. Yeah, see? That's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's, it's, it is just kind of funny all around. This is crazy. Here is a cost of a pint in Dalesford, Victoria. In a tab, a colonial pal, nothing fancy. Didn't realize it cost until the third one. Cost of a pint, $17.40. Holy crap, that sounds like a lot. Let's see if 1740 Aussie dollars in US dollars. Okay, so 1740 Aussie dollars in US dollars is 11.48. Wow. Yeah, so that would be like 11.50 for me for a pint. That's a lot. That's a lot. I'm trying to think. I haven't gone out and gotten a pint in a while. I looked up the U.S. cost uh, near me for a pint of beer, and it was around 4 to $6, so way cheaper. Cheaper to fly to Japan and drink at this stage. <laughs> Jeez. Just got back from my first trip over there. 500 milliliter cans for any convenience store for 300 yen. We're getting royally screwed here. Is it cheap to drink in Japan? It's weird. Pubs have caught up to airports. Don't tell the airports. Yeah, that's not a good sign, is it? Um, is, is it just a Dalesford problem? Is this like a touristy area? Is there like a reason, you know, remember we've seen other posts there like some seasonal charge or something going on here. That does sound pretty pricey. Well, this ought to be fun. What's your favorite overlooked or underrated food product available in Aussie supermarkets? Uh, they voted for Whitaker chocolate. I've never heard anyone say much about it either, but then I saw people raving about it on another sub. So I picked up a mini bar of plain chocolate, give it a try. Uh, well, let me say, I have had Whitaker chocolate. You guys are amazing. And you've sent me Whitaker chocolate before. It is phenomenal. It is some of the best I've had. Arnott's Malto Milk Biscuits. Perfect dunk into coffee melt in your mouth. <sighs> yes, I'm, I am a very lucky person. You guys are amazing. I've had those as well. They're great. The Aldi plain salted lentil chips are incredibly tasty and you can easily eat a whole bag. What? Aldi plain salted lentil chips. Let me see if I can find those. Aldi, uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, it doesn't, it, see, it pulls up UK. So I probably have them UK and EU. Access denied. Wow, I see how it is. Okay, they're not gonna let me look at Aldi UK. Wow. Damn, be that way, huh? <laughs> Maybe these are it. Uh, are these it or are these just a different version, like a different brand? I don't know. I've definitely never had these before. They look very uh, intriguing. They do. Aldi Lovers Australia. Okay, these are for sure it. Oh, wow. Look at that. I'm going to try the barbecue ones. Anyone had the lentil chips? I will see if I can find these in the U.S. at any store, quite frankly. This is all the U.S. And um, here's the U.S. All the I, I'm not sure that we have these. What are we doing? We have sweet potato chips, cauliflower tortilla chips. Oh, no lentil chips. Lame. Man, we miss out on good stuff all the time. You'll have to tell me in the comments if these are, are uh, really tasty. Australia is a diverse country and respecting important cultural events is in our thickened blood. What cultural and special events are important to you and your family? The passing of Ziz. <laughs> What? This is unexpected. Uh, believe it or not, one of my first dives into, I guess, Australia, like way before YouTube here. Remember, I told you Australia has been in and out of my life like a lot growing up, right? Uh, now, one of the phases of being into somewhat Australian stuff was uh, in around 2009, 2010, you know, I got into bodybuilding, fitness, big time, and I was... For like 10 years, no, about eight years straight until about 2018, really into that stuff. And yeah, uh, I used to watch a lot of videos with different personalities, right? Of course, at the time. And uh, Ziz was very famous for a while. And then, of course, unfortunately, he did pass away around, uh, gee, I want to say like 2011, 2012, maybe. Uh, but yeah, he was from, I believe, Queensland, Australia, right? Maybe I, I, you guys can correct me, but yeah, he was definitely like an Australian fitness influencer way before it was like super common like it is now. And the fact that someone would write this on like some sort of quiz or something is <laughs> a little bit different, not going to lie. 
It's 2011. You're in a snapback varsity jacket, Ray-Bans, and stretcher earrings. Fist pumping to Give Me Everything by Pitbull, remixed by Timmy Trumpet at Billboards. You're living the motto, which is hashtag YOLO, hashtag swag. You've watched the latest Jersey Shore episode, which you've blogged about on Tumblr, and can't wait to GTL for Stereosonic and bump into the Statics crew, Ziz and Chespra. Life is good. <laughs> I hate that I can relate. I hate that I'm old enough to relate. Yeah, it is freaky um, that this feels like recent memory to me, but that this was like almost 15 years ago. That's what's freaking me out. You Myron, we're all going to make it, brah. Why do I hear hard style? Hard style, I did a video on that like a year or two ago. That was pretty interesting. Australia went hard on hard style. Whoa, this is kind of cool. Does anyone know why the Wikipedia page for Cooper Petty features a spaceship? Look at this. It looks like Star Wars. What are we on, Tatooine? Look at that. This is a cool picture. What a landscape, right? It looks super hot because it is. <laughs> and right there, you got a spaceship chilling. That is that literally from Star Wars, guys? Like, th There's been Star Wars along the what? How many movies are there now? Like 10 or 11 or some crazy number? Something's had to have been filmed in Australia at some point, right? If I remember correctly, they filmed Pitch Black in the area, and it's a leftover set. Oh, it is. What is this? Pitch Black fight evil with evil. What is this? I don't remember this. Release date, February 18, 2000. And it's a U country, U.S. Wow, it's an American movie. Anyone uh, remember seeing this movie? Uh, Vin Diesel's in it. Cole Hauser, Rada Mitchell... Keith David. Uh, Vin Diesel is being transported to prison in a spacecraft and escapes when the spaceship is damaged by comet debris and crash lands on an empty desert planet. Let me guess. The desert planet is Cooper Petty. <laughs> oh my goodness. Holy crap. You guys were lying when you said Australia is hot, dude. <laughs> it is 105 currently. The high today is going to be 108 Fahrenheit, by the way. You already knew that. Uh, tomorrow, 107. Monday, 110. And then 114 on Tuesday and 113 on Wednesday. And by the way, the lows at night, the low at night in that desert is 88 degrees. That's actually frightening. Ooh, this is kind of crazy. Woolworth's total amount due is more than the sum of my actual purchases. Was annoyed that the amount due on my Woolies purchase did not equate to the individual items I purchased. 160 plus 420 plus 526 plus 465 equals 1570. And we're in Australia. So these numbers add up, and that's the number. There's no hidden tax or nothing. Because I'm thinking, oh, here, they're, they're going to add the tax. No, that's all done already, right? Which makes it so much easier actually seeing this in a, in a format like this. It, it's so much better than where you add up stuff here and it's like, oh, wait, <laughs> there's tons of dollars hidden at the end in taxes that are added on. Yeah, this is much more straightforward. Anywho, you see that it adds up to 1570 but Woolworths claims that they're 1790 due. That's a $2.20 difference. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty off, right? Hoping that you all don't get taken advantage by Colesworth even further amidst all the already inflated prices. Yeah, I'd say this is a pretty good PSA here because that is not, that's not right. And assume they did not pay that. They did not, you know, they, they had to tell someone because that's not good. Otherwise, they'll try and do that to everyone and who knows what they'll get away with. Uh, that's, that's a big difference. Curious if you usually manually add up your total. I would have been blindly paid good on you. I mean, that's a, that's a good point. I'll to, God, I'll have to pay attention to the store. I hope they're not screwing me here in the U.S. I mean... It's the U.S., right? Corporations love to screw people here. I hope they're not. I mean, it's even harder to tell here because the prices don't match the final price because of all the hidden taxes and stuff. Always amused rediscovering this while cleaning my kitchen cupboards. New Vegemite Craft Eye Snack 2.0. A deliciously different Vegemite experience. <laughs> what on earth is Eye Snack 2.0? I've gotten sent a lot of different Vegemites by you guys, which is awesome. I've never heard of this. What the hell is it? It belongs in a museum. <laughs> may also melt your face off when opened. What? I, what is it? Is it like an old product? 
lids unpopped, it's still good. Vegemite stay good probably for a long time, right? Like if you really needed to, right? I feel like it, it's a food that would stay good for a long time. All right, last one, last one, guys. Hi, American here. What is a bumble nut? <laughs> G'day, bumble nuts, says Bluey. Just dads making up non-swear or Aussie slang names for people slash kids or one kid. I love it. Aussies are the best with coming up nicknames. We know that, right? Aussie nicknames and swear words are the best. It's not even close. E.G., rat bags, drongos, pork chop, bungos, weirdos, zubric, galas, cobber, dingbats, flappos, ding-dongs. <laughs> Edit. I missed bugalogs. Hand in my dad card. That's how the Aussies do it. Bravo. Heard a bloke call out, can I get some help? And before I knew it, I was helping push his bike onto the train. That doesn't, yeah, that looks like a motorcycle. <laughs> Why is he taking this on the train? Uh, I'm so lost here. Is, is that legal? Hey, I actually know this one. Someone said, wife bought these instead of super dupers. Can someone tell me the trick? So these, right, I know what these are. It's been a while since I've seen one of these. You grab them on each end, and the middle part you see is jointed, right? You're going to twist. Where's my hands? Twist it and snap. It'll snap right off, clean break, and there you go, dual wielding the popsicles. I'm sure these are hitting great in that 113-degree weather uh, in various parts of Australia. So, yeah, drink up. <laughs> That's going to do it for this one, guys. I hope you have an excellent, excellent weekend. Stay hydrated and cool and, uh, you know, make sure to wear the sunscreen. And for uh, anyone watching from somewhere cold, like me, <laughs> stay warm. And you don't need sunscreen right now because it's snowy and cloudy and crazy. So, yeah, stay warm, stay cool, wherever the hell you're at. <laughs> My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. Until next time, y'all. Catch you later.